Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? It's Egal Talks Football, and I'm back again with another video. Today, I have an update on Bakayo Saka's injury, and if he will be featuring for Arsenal in the foreseeable game, we'll have to wait and see. Also, we have an update on none other than Mikel Moreno. He actually played for for Spain in the most recent game, so we're going to have to speak about Mikel Moreno. We're going to have to speak about a certain Martin Odegaard. Will Martin Odegaard be featuring with Arsenal in the foreseeable future or could he be out for an extended period? This plus more on today's show. Now, before you guys go any further, I just need you guys to do me a favor. Please hit the like on this video. Let's just get this video past at least 300 likes if possible. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed to the channel lately, everyone who's been supporting the channel lately, because we are so, so close to getting 30,000 subscribers. We are literally at this moment in time. 25 subscribers away from getting 30k subscribers so please do subscribe if you guys do like the content and of course like the video if you guys enjoy the video now before we go any further i just want to tell you guys there was a lot going on in the last couple of days with arsenal news rumors and sources oh and i even forgot to mention that there's a certain arsenal academy player ethan winery is going to get a new contract and he's going to be the highest paid teenager in the Premier League. Now, before we go any further, I just want to show you guys something about um, uh, Martin Odegaard. And don't lose your minds, ladies and gentlemen. Don't lose your minds because this has been confirmed that is not 100% true. A couple of days ago, there was a source going around, an, a well known Arsenal source, not the most, uh, not uh, an official, but unconfirmed rumor that Bukayo, uh, but Martin Odegaard suffered a setback and, in his recovery and it, it was and is not expected to return until December. This is what's been said by this account here on Twitter. And a lot of people re uh, are saying this is a reliable source. This is a very uh, close uh, source to the Emirates. And he's gotten a lot of things right in the past. And you even have other people saying that, well, eight to 12 weeks was the initial timeline. So if he returns in December, that is understandable. What's the difference between coming back in November or coming back in December? Well, that has been put to bed, ladies and gentlemen. And we have now gotten confirmation from Sky Sports stating that uh, Martin Odegaard did not actually suffer a setback and that he will actually most likely still be back for Arsenal in November. Exact word coming is Martin Odegaard has not suffered a setback for Arsenal and is hopeful he can return uh, uh, from his ankle injury in November. Now, this is a great relief. As much as you guys think we've done well without Martin Odegaard, him coming back into this team, he is still one of our best players and he's still one of the best players in the Premier League and in Europe in his position. So he would be a massive boost to us for the second half of the season if he can come back fit and, and be back from his injury issues. Now, he's still a very relatively young player and he hasn't had too many injuries in his career. So hopefully this is not a reoccurring thing and hopefully when he does come back, he can stay fit for the rest of the season and help us go push on to go win some major honors, go, go win that league or something else maybe even. But before we go any further, I just want to let you guys know Martin Odegaard will not be back until November, meaning he will still miss all of October's games. And, and even though it says he'll come back in November, it doesn't mean he'll necessarily come back at the beginning of November. It just, November is uh, a long month. So he could come in the middle, beginning or end. We just don't know exactly when he's going to be back. But until there's con official confirmation from either Mikel Arteta in a press conference or Arsenal themselves saying that Martin Odegaard is back fully fit, I'm not going to just come out here and spread misinformation and give you guys uh, unconfirmed sources. So I'll keep you guys updated and I'll try to give you guys the best news as we go about that every single day. Now, there is also more news about Arsenal. And that news, of course, is uh, international break. A lot of players are playing well. Uh, you got you got Saliba doing his thing. You got Gabriel Magalhães having a man of the match performance for Brazil. You have all sorts of stuff. But one thing that sadly has happened is Bukayo Saka was playing for England against Greece. And when Bukayo Saka was playing for England against Greece, he ended up having to leave the game due to some muscular injuries. And Bukayo Saka was set to be uh, set to have a scan after coming off against Greece. Now, we have heard an update today about Bakaya Saka's injury and what, what that update is. We've gotten it directly from the manager of England. Lee Carson has come out, the interim manager for England, three hours ago and gave us an update on Bakaya Saka. And this is a good update, ladies and gentlemen. I'm quite happy to hear this. He Lee Carson said that on Bakaya Saka's injury, Bakaya Saka would, be cl uh, would have been close uh, to playing in uh, versus Finland, but 
it would uh, have been unfair to take the risk on him. He is a, a positive person, and I expect him to be fine. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Bukayo Saka not only is going to be okay, he could have played versus Finland for England, but he has returned back to Arsenal, and he's going to be getting ready for the game versus against Bournemouth. And I, at this point, I would expect Bukayo Saka to play against Bournemouth. That's just the reality of the situation. We know Bukayo Saka does not want to miss games. We know Bukayo Saka, whenever he can, he will try to stay on that pitch to play. And that is positive news there. So positive news for Martin Odegaard. He will be back in November. There's no setback in injuries. Positive news for Bukayo Saka. He will be back um, ready to go for that. That is some good news in that situation. Also, um, there's a situation. There's a, there's a there's a there's another little update that we got that we need to speak about. The update is there's reports. Now these are unconfirmed, so I'm not gonna go all all, all and tell you guys 100% this is gonna happen. 100% that's gonna happen. We don't know, but one thing we do know is Ethan Winery is one of Arsenal's high. Uh, uh, highest rated academy players and when i say highly rated i mean highly rated like everyone at the club rates ethan winery quite highly and right now there's a situation where ethan winery could be given a new contract it's it is reported from a very 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 weak source so i am telling you guys it is relatively unconfirmed but the rumor is that ethan winery could be getting anywhere in the region of 60k a week as as a as a seventeen year old, he could be on sixty k a week. The cl the club are desperate to get the teenager to sign a long term contract, and this might be a way to get him in line with the likes of Kobe Maynu's pay at this moment in time in Manchester United to try to entice him to stay at the club for the foreseeable future. I don't know if this is true, but we will have to wait and see, as this is a very very interesting discussion point. And finally, the Premier League are looking to make some changes, ladies and gentlemen. The Premier League are looking to make some changes. And I just want to know what you guys think about these potential changes the Premier League could make. So it is understood that the Premier League are making some rule changes on how they're going to do broadcasting going forward. And I just want to know what you guys think about this. Um, the situation is that currently they have interviews post-match with the manager. Soon they'll be inter uh, interviewing assistant managers also. They're also understanding that they want to have cameras in the dressing rooms. Uh, to be broadcasting what they're doing in the dressing room before the game or after the game. Also, they want to have interviews for players who uh, who are subbed off. So you can interview a player who had a hat trick that got subbed off or a player who got a red card, for example. Also, um, they want to do halftime interviews with players and coaches. So that might be interesting also. But reportedly, they're only going to pick one of these three choices up here and if, if they could pick any of them, I would love to see some halftime interviews, NBA-style interviews. I think it would be good for the game. But, hey, some of you guys are going to call it utter woke nonsense. But I'm, that's it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm not going to get into all the bullshit Bukayo Saka comparisons to other players. We're not going to get into all the other stuff. There's not really much more to be said. Just giving you the cold hard facts and everything you need to hear about Arsenal. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please get that video past 300 likes if you can. And also I'll catch you guys on the next video. Love for the love people as always. You already know what it is. Ega, I'm out. Peace.